Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, out here today, just going to do a real quick video on hopefully a little tip or trick on uh, turning between centers. We've got a small part to do the, that's not a super critical dimension, and so we don't need to put it between, you know, really get down in the thousands kind of range. We just need to take a quarter inch off this thing because it just drops in a hole and takes up some space. So we're going to do that and I'm going to show you how I get that done. And before that, I want to say thanks to Jay Kilroy. Uh, back the first part of January, I was celebrating having 200 subscribers. And today, before I came out here, I looked and I had 650 subscribers. So uh, things have made a pretty drastic change here in the last couple weeks. And I appreciate that to all of you that are interested in watching my videos. And when the weather gets better, I'll try to have even some more better, more entertaining, interesting videos. Right now, it's uh, snowing out here again, so not a lot going on as far as the barn project goes. So let me get you turned around here and I'll show you what I got going on getting this bushing done. See there's a, our drive mechanism, our double sided emery cloth. Uh, works pretty good. So I thought I'd bring you back in here and show you my finished up organization on my beaver tools. So I've got all my drill section and my end mills by size. Some my favorite Lovejoy cutters there. Um, 
tin of metal side mill there, that's, that's a good cutter too. I like it because I've got several of these in that, uh, in my regular 50 series that uh, all use the same inserts. So I always try and keep stuff that uses the same inserts just so I don't have to buy a bunch of different styles. I really like these because they're very basic insert and I don't have to worry about them discontinuing them in a couple of years and not being able to get them anymore. Uh, you know, just a regular square insert and a regular round insert and they work very well. So I'd say m most of these other type geometries are merely sales gimmicks and ways to get you rooked into buying their product. So I try and stay away from that when possible. There is the Ames indicator on its very own Noga stand with the bottom adjust. So I picked that up when it was on sale and the 20% deal on Enco last week. So I got my setup blocks that go in the T slots on the boring mill stored in here. Got some setup wedges. And then down here on the bottom, I've got uh, the rest of the stuff. Now I got my extra trays. I was able to get my boring heads all in here. Uh, so we've got boring tool in there. We've got several face shell mill arbors. Some of them have stuff on them. Got some Jacob's Taper drill shanks, which I want to take this one off this 18 and put it on one of those because it'll make it shorter and that'll give me a better capability in the mill uh, being shorter it's always good because you're always running out of clearance in the mill or I do and those are the 50 adapters to use this stuff and there's my extra GNL one so let's and that's got everything up out of the floor and onto the cart so I'm happy about that this is a pretty good little cart it's probably it's got quite a bit of weight on it and it still ro rolls good and it's not deflecting too bad so definitely not a Harbor Freight special this is a Durham it's made in USA and I'm liking it. I'll get y'all a rare picture here for me. We've got the overarm extended on the Cincinnati. I had to take the vertical head off for the next job I'm going to do here. So uh, I thought I'd show you one of the things. I think it makes the Cincinnati setup better than the K and T is uh, a dovetail. You can crank the overarm in and out on these, and then when you get it wherever you want it, there, all you gotta do is pull this lever down, and that's it. It's locked. No tools required. So. I like that feature quite a bit. I'm not sure why uh, K&T makes you full full of screws instead of having a lock and lever on theirs. Uh, maybe they couldn't cut this big dovetail, so didn't have the machinery to make it that way, so they didn't do it. So some of you had asked what I might use these uh, blocks that I ground for, and this is exactly it. I've got... Uh, Two machined parallel surfaces here and I got a flange that won't clear so by putting these blocks underneath here I can get this thing to where it's straight to where I can machine it and then all I have to do is take my screw jacks and I can use them to level to where I can indicate here and indicate here and be sure that everything is where it needs to be to do my work here. 
So that's what those are for, is for setting up. Uh, without them, I couldn't even get my screw jacks underneath here, so it's kind of a double purpose. It raises it up to where my jacks work, and it lets me go to those machined parallel surfaces already. And by using that, I can keep everything the same as what the factory did because that's what they indicate off of. So I just want to show that. And uh, got another pretty good sized piece in the mill there. This is uh, not something that you do on the bridge port. And it sure will be nice when I have that crane to move this stuff with instead of that cherry picker. It's kind of a pain. Got to run the table all the way out and even then I got to push it because I, I can't get it far enough back with the legs out and they won't uh, won't go around the base of the mill. So, thanks again to all my new subscribers and thanks for watching.